Thank you, um, Chair. Thank you, Minister. Um, I apologise, I didn't. Uh, I wasn't in the building uh, for your introducing the legislation. I must admit, I find myself um, torn badly uh, on this particular piece of legislation because I've been a strong proponent for a long time of trying to get the hospitality sector open. But I do have concerns uh, around some of the issues that have been raised by others, namely the sharing of medical data with with third parties, with businesses, in this case, the, the demands that that would put on those businesses. Also, the implementation of, of um, the provisions of this um, legislation, but chiefly with the need to provide an alternative um, to this uh, vaccine passport. I know in the contributions I've heard today, people have been temperate in their use of language, um, but I do want to join others in really expressing my disgust some members of the House and indeed um, some communications I've received myself that um, use terms like apartheid and refer to um, the, the, the Star of David and things like this. Um, it's a despicable um, uh, false equivalence um, for the people who, who endured uh, such terrors under those regimes. But what we're being asked to address here today is serious, um, and uh, there's a couple of questions I want to pose directly to you, Minister. The most obvious one, which uh, I think I have the answer to already, is why are we doing this now, and why are we seeking to divide different groups, particularly younger people against, against older people who are vaccinated? I'm someone with an underlying condition, and I've been vaccinated for, fully vaccinated for quite some time. I know we're doing it, I suppose, to, to ensure that the hospitality sector in this country can have a summer of some sort. Um, but it's still the method and this particular legislation and other measures, um, to me, unless there's some tweaking made, um, do provide a number of obvious contradictions. And I'll refer to them if I get a chance a little bit later. At the start of the week, we were told that 55% of the population had been fully vaccinated. Um, I'm just wondering, Minister, what, in your view, from the advice you have, uh, would be the figure for people who are totally, completely vaccinated by the 26th of July, and when, according to the advice you're getting, we will get to a position of having 80% of the population uh, fully vaccinated. I also have concerns in relation to the implementation and policing of this. Um, will it actually be put into practice on the ground, as envisaged by the government? Um, I've raised and spoken there just a few seconds ago about the issue of holding private, uh, personal medical information by, by a private business. Uh, I'm aghast by the fact that we had many NGOs a couple of years ago when the government at the time were talking about the public services card who didn't want government agencies to share information that they already hold that people had given freely. Um, but none of those NGOs seem to have expressed any concern about the obvious um, potential difficulty from this bill, which is that third parties are holding private um, information on people. How is that to be held? It's also placing individual restaurant owners or bar owners in a very invidious position, um, a position that they don't want to be in, to be, to be frank. Uh, I also have concerns about the use of a travel document for purposes other than travel, which is what we're enshrining into legislation if this becomes law. Um, and I have grave concerns about the fact that, you know, here we are again, last week of the doll. I've been, this is my 20th summer in Leinster House, or <laughs> the convention centre as well. Um, and it's often been the case that serious legislation is discussed rather quickly in the last uh, week of the House sitting. And that's not a good way to do business. Um, I do acknowledge, though, and I want to thank the Minister and his officials, Tarnished and others, whips that this legislation does enable testing to be used as an alternative um, to the vaccine passport. Um, and I want to thank those who have ensured that that is the case. I have two principal asks, really. Uh, Minister, if you can, in your response, give some statement of what your target is for the introducing of, of antigen testing or PCR testing, definitely short or referred to it earlier, people have, who've taken PCR tests for other purposes. When will people who undergo those tests, do you think, what's your aim for when they will be able to use that as an alternative to a vaccine passport to avail of? What we're talking about here is having your lunch indoors or having a drink 
indoors. Um, and I also want to ask you, Minister, and I, I think you might be able to accede to this, um, once the Dáil returns in September, I firmly believe that this legislation should be on, uh, up for debate uh, as item number one, or certainly on the first day that the Dáil comes back. I know the legislation has a time frame of, of three months, but um, I don't see any particular reason why, having had it on the statute books for the bones of two months, we can't at that stage, rather than wait till the last minute in October, to see whether it should be reviewed or, or changed, or indeed, um, hopefully not extended. Um, there's also the, 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 and I spoke about them briefly earlier, the obvious contradictions. The, the current status of, you know, if you go to a hotel, uh, and you're a resident, you can eat in, in, in the dining room, but if you're, if you're not, you can't. And I know this legislation will allow people who have, um, who have, uh, have the vaccine passport to dine in, indoors in those locations. Uh, but I'm, I'm uneasy about the fact that um, um, up till now, at least, uh, people who have had uh, much less by way of evidence to show that they aren't carrying the, the virus um, have been able to use some of those facilities. I'm also concerned by the fact that the legislation uh, exempts under 18s. I am because it's that category of 16 to 24 that are the people who are most infectious, conscious of the fact that just as we're speaking here now, 783 new cases have been declared for today, which is the highest since the 20th of February. Thankfully, hospitalizations at 73 and ICU beds at 20 are still low. So we do have to have it firmly, not just in the back, but in the front of our mind, that we're uh, uh, those figures. But the core figures are the numbers that are, are, are in hospital and, and, and those who are in ICU. And those figures, thankfully, are still, are, are still remaining low. Thank I'm you. also conscious, Deputy. and this is the last point I'll make, Chair, um, that there was a judgment of the Supreme Court, I think, in 1983, Brennan and the Attorney General, where uh, an allowance was made that groups could be treated differently for legitimate legislative purposes once uh, the different treatment is related to the purpose of the legislation and each class is treated fairly. I think by that test, this bill probably is constitutional, but I still have grave reservations and I would ask the Minister to indicate to the House in his response when he believes that the testing alternative um, to the vaccine passport will be available and make that as soon as possible. Thank you, Deputy Phelan. I